All right, differential equations. These can be fun. Um, what are we going to do? We're going to do use the slope field to sketch an approximate solution. We're going to use the tangent line to approximate a value near an initial condition point. And then finally, we're going to do everybody's favorite separation of variables to find the exact solution with the given initial condition. And so what I've written on the right are some key things to remember in order to attack those problems. And so let's go ahead and start with uh, part A. And part A, the entire solution is to simply draw something, so not going to actually write anything down here. But let's review what it says on the right. So slope fills really are a kind of approximate solution that's visual. It's not unlike using the tangent line or Euler's method approximation. We've got uh, short tangent line, short tangent line segments at various points throughout the space. And we just, uh, just like you connected dots when you were a kid to make drawings, we're connecting those little line segments. Um, it's usually uh, some trial and error as you s try to sketch in with a pencil a, a nice curve that connects the line segments um, because sometimes you don't get it quite right and you have to erase and start again. So to spare you all that, here's my sketch, but I did it offline. Notice that what I do is I start at that point zero one, right, right here. That's where we know uh, the solution uh, goes through that point, and so we we sketch following the tangent line, the little tangent line segments. We sketch it forward and we sketch it backward. I probably should have continued uh, the sketching here, and that makes it clear to me that this really goes more like I don't know that or something. But you get the gist of the idea. And that's part A. Part B asks us to approximate uh, f of 0.2 using a tangent line uh, approximation. And the tangent line, of course, is just point slope form, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1, where m is the... Uh, the uh, slope of the tangent line, or in other words, it's the derivative at the point in question, the value of the derivative at the point in question. So I just say, look, in general, uh, the tangent line is given by y minus y1 equals dy dx evaluated at x1, y1 times x minus x1. Um, in this case, what do we know? Well, in this case, we have y minus y1 is the point given 1. dy dx is uh, 3 minus, what's the y value? The y value is 1 times the cosine of 0. What does this actually come out to? It's going to be 3 minus 1 is 2. Cosine of 0 is 1. And that all gets multiplied by x minus x1, which in this case is 0. <clears throat> so what we really have is uh, y minus 1 equals 2x. Or in other words, um, y equals 2x minus 1. Now, I'm not a fan of rewriting the point-slope form into slope-intercept form because... There's no need to. They just ask for an equation for the line. 
and you might make a mistake. But in this case, since we're asked to find f of 0 0.2, I'm going to do it. So I'm going to write, um, let's see, f of 0 0.2, therefore, uh, f of 0 0.2 is approximately um, what's the x value? Here, oh, I, I see. Well, look, I just did the very thing I said was a problem. Yeah, this is really 2x plus 1. There, I could have lost credit. So it's 2 times 0 0.2 plus 1, which equals 1.4. That takes care of part B. Okay, what's left is the separation of variables method of solving a differential equation. Again, I remind you, you collect factors, not individual terms, of x dx on one side and y dy on the other side. We're going to integrate separately. Don't forget the plus c. Solve for y, and then use the initial condition to determine c. So away we go. We have dy dx equals 3 minus y cosine x, okay? So we get dy over 3 minus y equals cosine x dx. I don't know, maybe we should write something rearranging. Rearranging. And now integrating each side separately. Okay, integrating each side separately, we've got the integral of dy over 3 minus y equals, um, we're going to do a u substitution, but it's a simple enough one that I'm not going to explicitly write it out. We're going to say that u is 3 minus y. That makes du the negative of dy. And so that means we've got negative du over u. So that means negative ln absolute value of 3 minus y plus c. And the other side is going to be cosine x dx. Fortunately, we all know that's a simple indefinite integral to do. That's going to be sine of x plus c combining Okay, we now have negative ln of the absolute value, 3 minus y plus, uh, I'm not even going to include that plus c because I'm going to consolidate it with the c on the other side, equals sine of x plus c, where of course this c is different from this one because we've just combined these c's. Uh, I don't like negative signs in front of ln's. It confuses me enough to have the absolute value there, so I'm going to rewrite this as or ln absolute value 3 minus y equals negative sine x plus c. We've applied the negative sign to the plus c, but we just redefine c at each step, so it doesn't actually change anything. And now we exponentiate. we have absolute value 3 minus y equals e to the negative sine x plus c. A common move now is to rewrite 3 minus y as plus or minus e to the c, e to the negative sine x. Again, I'm not going to cover in this video, because um, this is an FRQ, but this is a standard technique of consolidating all of our ignorance into a single location. Now we have y equals <laughs> equals um, uh, what is that going to be? 3 plus or minus y equals uh, 3 
plus or minus. It would strictly be speaking minus or plus. But again, we haven't specified anything yet. And so now we can apply the initial condition. Sorry, I'm sort of running out of space. Initial condition. We have uh, 1 equals 3. Uh, that's going to be a 0. e to the 0 is 1. And so this plus or minus e to the c is has got to be minus 2. And so finally we have in general y equals, or let's see, do they ask us to find, I guess we shouldn't write it as y equals, we should write it as applying initial condition leads to f of x equals 3 minus 2e to the negative sine x. That's the end of the FRQ. But there's one other thing that I think is worth noting post stressful time of doing the FRQ, and that is the solution we found in C is what we were approximating in A. So I actually graphed that solution, and let's just see how it superimposes back on the initial slope field. Not bad. Again, I was a little careless up here when I was graphing my initial solution, but I think it would have been fully acceptable to the uh, omnipotent readers. Hope that helps.